What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric, uh, my man, Eric, Jake Rohde. This is how long it's been since we've done a show. Wow. I didn't even get your name right. I'm, I'm just so used to saying cheats. Uh, it's good. To, it's good to be back, man. It's good to do this where we, you know, we, we, we hit on a couple of good things last year. I think that we can do it again. And uh, it's a fun week we got here. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to be doing this again with you. Yeah, man, it's uh, good to get it going again. And uh, I need to get on some more videos, obviously. Um, it's a it's a pretty big slate we got here. It's kind of different. Um, it, it should be a fun one, though, this this weekend for sure. Yeah, so let's start off this year. I thought it'd be fun. So we'll start off. We'll do stacks. Then we'll go position by position. Sound good? Okay. Or do you want to do it the other way around? I thought stacks either start or finish. Um, We can do stacks first. Okay. All right, let's uh, jump into it. I'm going to use the just the DraftKings regular thing because we could talk a little bit if there's anything specifically on FanDuel. There's a couple of pricing discrepancies. But I, I basically only have – so I have two primary games that I'm targeting this week. The major one is Buffalo-Baltimore. I'm going to need some value because the, the reason these guys are lower owned is because they're just so expensive to get in the stack the way that you like it. That's clearly my number one. Um, I'm interested in Jacksonville-Philly. I'm my, my sort of other ones are Seattle, Detroit, Chargers, Houston, potentially Cleveland, Atlanta, and potentially Denver, Las Vegas. But my priority is, is the Buffalo game. And my second priority is I'm going to get a ton of exposure on both sides of the Jacksonville Philly game. Uh, I think these teams both, uh, you know, uh, Baltimore and Buffalo have, have shown the ability that they can just put up a million points every week. And I have no reason to think they can't score on each other. So I am going to be well overweight on that situation. And like I said, all the other ones are secondary for me behind Philly. Philly is my next favorite, but nothing is close to this one for me. And uh, I'm going to be mixing in some of the Detroit, Seattle, probably without the quarterbacks, some of the Chargers, Houston, without the quarterbacks, Cleveland, Atlanta. I'm open to one quarterback there, but mostly it's, it's that that's my main focus. I don't want to get too spread out. So those are the games I'm going to be targeting. Um, although I do have some priority plays from, from other, in other games. Um, what do you think of those and what do you do? What are your, what's your sort of first look that you want to do? Uh, yeah, I definitely like those games. Um, yeah, obviously I'm a big chargers fan for their, their upside. Um, I think Herbert's still kind of banged up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, they got pretty condensed. I think Eckler's about to make a, a big splash one of these days with a big game. Um, on, it could be just on the ground, you know, where, where he's the guy to go to. Um, I think, I think Casey might get a little overlooked this week. I know it's Tampa Bay. It's kind of like a weird game. Um, I mean, Kelsey's been not really on the good. Slate. Huh? Not on the slate. Really? It's not on the main slate. I must have the wrong date here. I was like wondering, Oh, why is that on my slate? Uh, it's oh, on the Sunday through Monday up here. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. My yeah. bad, my bad. Wrong yeah. slate. I'm like, yeah. I was like, I, this. Why are there so many games? I'm like, yeah. I'm scrolling <laughs> over. I'm like, this ain't right. And I'm like, I, I just got reading them. My bad. No, no problem. Like, okay, yeah, Casey would be a great play. Yeah, right. I would like. I, I, would, I would be interested in, this, in some things in that game potentially. But yeah, right. Because Kelsey's awesome, right? So that's yeah. gonna be a fun. Uh, that's a Sunday night game, right? I should have. Yeah, yeah. Thought other. All right, let's get on to this. Like, yeah, Philly's yeah. Philly's been a hot team. Um, they're going to be a little chalky. Uh, that's really the, you know, the one team I'm going to go to, you know, obviously we had, um, what's his name? Devonte Smith go nuke last week, which was a little different than most people were going to have. Um, you know, I don't even mind the Jacksonville side of that game. Um, you know, Christian Kirk's been playing really well, not getting the ownership lately. Um, if that's going to be a good shootout game, then maybe, maybe he comes to play and, you know, get Kirk a little bit in that game. Um, as well. So I got the chargers. I got the Philly. I like, uh, Buffalo. I really like too. Um, you know, Diggs looks like he's super owned this week, but I mean, yeah, that's going to be a fun game. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played much with Lamar in my past to Mark Andrews, but that might be a mini stack with some runbacks. Well, and unfortunately game. for you, those would have, that, 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 that's what wins the tournaments <laughs> because that's yeah. basically been what you need to have is, is the Lamar to Mark Andrews. They're combining for 70 points the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I did have them in my monster two weeks ago, which okay. cashed, but I had everything else wrong, even though I was on Chubb and Br uh, I'm on when they went nuclear, I didn't have them yeah. in that lineup for some reason. Um, but it would have been a bigger lineup with them in there, but, um, yeah, so I, I like that. And, you know, um, you know, even talking about Chubb, Chubb this week again, you know, faces Atlanta, I mean, low ownership. I mean, I'm only seeing him at 6%, Yeah, you know, I, I might get into some Cleveland running backs. 
I know I'm starting to talk about plays a little bit, but I'm just kind of looking at game games, you know, and I didn't even mention my Packers, right? Like they're probably, you know, this Dobbs guy's coming out of nowhere, right? He's pretty cheap still. Yeah. It looks like he's getting a receiver one type. Yeah, you're not looking at that as a stacking game, right? I mean, what are you playing from New England that makes any sense? Um, I've been high on Jacoby Myers if he's back. Um, he's only four eight. He gets a lot of looks, but yeah, we gotta hope, we gotta see on Mac Jones. So I'll tell you so. what, if you play that game, no one's playing it. So I think yeah, that- I mean that's low, and I'm just I'm just looking at some you know yeah. different pivots. I mean, mostly I'm gonna be on Philly. I'm gonna be on Chargers. I mean, the slate's kind of you know a little bit nutso, a little bit. I yeah. haven't been playing a lot of the Cardinals. What are your thoughts on them guys? I mean, so that's. That's the really that's the other one I should have mentioned that it's not like a sneaky one. Yeah. Like you're never gonna get Kyler at this ownership. It's Kyler in September still technically. I guess it'll be October then. What what's the date? I can't I, I can't even remember the date. It actually will be October. It'll be like the yeah. second. Well, still yeah. the first two months of Kyler is usually a great thing to bet on, and the fact that he's not getting any looks this week is it, it does make it interesting to me. And you've got really cheap pieces. You got the expensive McCaffrey, but then you've got DJ Moore at fifty three hundred, which. I even it just sucks that Baker's his quarterback because I still really believe he's truly talented. So you, I could see that game doing something. And Arizona, you know, that game wouldn't surprise me if it's twelve seven or if it's forty to thirty. Because you know what I mean. Like it's just I could see both sides of it. That's why I'm so heavily focused on the two that I like because I know Philly's going to put up points. I know Baltimore can put up points. I know B- Buffalo can put up points. And I believe in Jacksonville. What scares me about the Jacksonville side of that is that Jacksonville's defense. I mean, they haven't given up a point in two games, or they're, they're, they're given ten points in the last two games. They're, they've been like really, really good on both sides of the ball. I think they're a lot better than people think that line probably would have been like 10 and a half, 11, if we didn't just see them just trounce the chargers. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm sort of heavily focused on those. But we could talk about some, some plays and stuff because for, let's get into the quarterback. Cause for me, it's going to be like, it's heavily going to be on my game stacks, obviously, but Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, uh, Jalen hurts and Trevor Lawrence is my chief quarterback that I, that I want to use the most this week. Um, I like those game environments and I'm going to stick with those. I, like you said, mixing in some Kyler cause he's going to be low owned. I, I like the idea of that. I think there is an opportunity at some point for this Denver offense to go off. So I don't mind that. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Rogers, the Dobbs stack is going to be, it's, I mean, it's super cheap. Um, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm just going to focus on my main four quarterbacks for my two games. And then I'll have some sprinklings of some other stuff. Um, I, we, I, when I did the show with Goldie, we ran through all the really cheap quarterbacks and just playing them for the, Hey, hope no quarterback gets above 30 something this week. And that my guy in the 50, whatever hundred range gets 20 to 25. And there's a lot of guys who fit that criteria who can fit that criteria, but I don't know how much ultimate ceiling all of these guys have. I do believe that Trevor Lawrence has one. I do think there's a, a path for Mariota. Um, Did you say Gino? And, and then the Gino's the obvious chalk one. I'm just not never going to yeah. put the chalk with no. I mean, I don't think he has it. Like he has the receivers to have a ceiling. It's a great okay. match. I love it with Detroit, but yeah. he just is that guy who I just don't, I just don't see getting there often enough. But if, if he gets me 22, even that's probably okay. So I'm okay with the Gino thing. I just don't want to fall in love with a chalk, the, the highest owned quarterback on the slate who I don't expect to get hardly ever over 20 fantasy points. <laughs> like just hard for me. I'd rather go with Mariota with the rushing upside. I'd rather go with the other guys around him. Um, I think he's a better real quarterback than some of these guys, but even like a guy like Trubisky could have a weird, like, like he did a couple of years ago, he, you know, he sucked all season. And then he had those two weird 40 fantasy point games. I could see something like that happening, but mostly for me, it's going to be the guys who I uh, are in my stacks, which are the three top most expensive quarterbacks. And then the, the chief Trevor Lawrence, how about you for your quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean that's a good point. I I really see where, why you like these three quarterback or these main three stacks this week, but it does there is some uh, weird stuff this week with some of these crappy quarterbacks like you just talked about going like Trubinsky going against the Jets, you know, like you know, and then like the Packers are going against you know New England, which hasn't done very well this year, and you know you don't even have to run it back sometimes with a run back even in that game, but. You know, maybe maybe the Green Bay blows out the New England. I mean, I wouldn't mind a run back with Turbitsky because Jets have a couple playmakers over there on that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And and like I, I said, I didn't even mention Russell Wilson's on this slate at probably real low ownership in that game. And, you know, maybe he gets it going. But, man, they have looked bad this year so far. Yeah. It's, it's might not even, you know, and then Ra- Raiders are 0-3, two guys. And, you know, Adams had the good week one. Everyone chased it. And then he, he's got like 12 yards the next week or something. So. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, I mean, like, just staying. He's like, he's like one yard per target right now. <laughs> like, yeah. 
So just doing what Bobby says is not a bad idea, guys. Taking these three these three main offenses, Philly, Baltimore, and Buffalo, these 40-point quarterbacks we've been seeing, you know, you got Hurts and Lamar with the rushing upside. You know, Josh Allen runs it too. And, and I mean, he's out there truck-sticking guys for touchdowns. So, I mean, like, you got three three premier quarterbacks right there. And, and you know, the, all three of those guys grayed out as their number one quarterbacks or the top three quarterbacks this week. And I don't, I don't mind doing that. And then just maybe if you're doing MME, like sprinkling in some Green Bay like I did. I mean, that Cleveland-Atlanta game, I don't mind it, but, I mean, that could be, like, we're playing Mar- Mariota or whatnot. Even Brissett's not been too awful. Game manageable to Amari Cooper's had some big games. But, but like you, like Bobby said, that game could be 12-9 to 9 or 35-40, yeah. you know. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't mind, uh, like Bobby was saying, what other game was it the – Detroit Seattle game. I mean, I've always liked DK Metcalf. I've been high on him, but obviously the quarterback situation is a little dicey. But you know, you you got to think Geno's cheap. You got to think Goff's cheap. You got to think Rodgers is cheap. So that's kind of why I mentioned a couple of those quarterbacks, just because you can get you'll be able to get some of these pieces of other games. Like you could play Mark Andrews with a cheap stack like that and a couple of good receivers, you know, or you can, you can play you know different different players. If you go with Dobbs and Aaron Rodgers, you can you can load up with Eckler and put some of these running backs you might like Eckler Chubb in there and pay up at running back or something so just get your build a little bit different and, and you're grabbing some of these low pieces I think it, it might be a weird weekend guys it's, it's been kind of a weird weekend to start each NFL there's been some upsets some teams you know like I mean last week the bill like all these weird teams won so like I mean my pick them is doing awful this year I, I'm not picking any of the games right for spreads on my some of my pick them so it's it's been a really weird it's been, uh, you know, that's how football starts, right? We never, we always, they, everybody thinks they know everything because it's been all the talk in the offseason. Then yeah. things happen and just uh, everything's totally different. Um, I like yeah. what you were saying about some of the running backs. I think we were going to be on the same page for this. Um, I do like McCaffrey for what it's worth, and I like Saquon fine. I, they're not priorities for me. I do think Eckler is a priority, and it's, it's, he did say like before the season, he said, I, I'm going to disappoint my fantasy owners this year because they're not going to get the ball as much, especially early on. They need to win football games. I think Houston is competitive enough. I think he gets to see more of the more of the field in this game. And I also don't think Houston has any way of stopping him. So I, I like Eckler and Chubb as the spend ups. At, and you'll get those are going to be the two, I think, two of the lowest spend ups. You're not going to get much, many people on Henry either. Um, but I like the idea of doing those guys at the top. I like Najee in the middle. I like Jamal Williams at 6,100, assuming that no Swift. Um, and then whether it's Herbert or Montgomery, but I prefer Herbert against uh, the Giants to go with potentially Damian Pierce also is, is a guy I'm heavily considering because I mentioned the games I like, which means I have to spend down at running back too often. If I'm going to stack the Lamar to, you know, Andrews with the run back of Diggs or something, uh, basically I'm going to have to pay spend in the five K's or 6,100 max for my running back. So those are the guys I'm on. I think that there's going to be some love for, uh, for Josh Jacobs. I I'm 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 very iffy on whether I want to make that play with Jacobs. Um, but I, I I my five priority ones are are uh, Herbert, Eckler, Pierce, Harris, Williams, and it's largely due to the rest of my construction. I think there's a lot of running backs with pretty solid opportunities this week. How about yeah, you? I mean I really like those guys. Um, I think it's going to be decently spread out with ownership this week. Except, you know, Jacobs looks like he's getting in some ownership. I think it's because his price of five five. Obviously, yeah. Jamal Williams with Swift out. I think is Swift officially out, or are they just not yet? Busy? Not yet. Yeah, I think it was still questionable, but it, it, he sounds like he's not going to play. So Jamal's and, and the funny thing with Jamal is, guys, if he comes in super chalk, he's been killing it. He's been taking a lot from Swift lately. Mm-hmm. But this is the type of game where you you get this cheap running back that comes into this role, and then all of a sudden he lays a dud. So I, I just kind of be w- worried about those guys that have been. You know, Jamal's been scoring touchdowns. He's been getting fantasy points. Now he's in the role to shine. Everyone jumps on it, and then he lays six points on you. I mean, that's how he's done it to me before. I used to play him mm-hmm. a lot as a Green Bay backer, um, you know. But, I mean, he's a good play at his price. I like him. I like Eckler, like we said. Jonathan Taylor, I don't know if you mentioned that, but you mentioned Derrick Henry in that game. Um, Taylor might get a little low ownership, and he's not too priced up. But, I mean, you know, CMC is also a great play. Grades out as the number one play right now. So, yeah, there's a lot of good backs, and some of these high upside backs are very spread out this week. And, and even going back to the Green Bay game, I mean, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Yeah, that's Aaron the Aaron Jones problem, is cheap though. at 7-5. He's had a big game already this year. Maybe maybe it's Dillon's game. But New England's, you know, maybe 
not going to be that good. And if Mac Jones is out, they could be bad. And maybe they just run the ball and you know, score with the running backs this week. And one of those guys go off. So if you're MME and throw those guys in your pool, um, you know, Ooh. so I, I think it's, you know, I've been playing. Oh, you said Najee too. Yeah. He's, he's in a good spot against the jets and I, I've been playing him so much. He's so cheap and his workload last year was so good. So we'll see if, if he can have that big game, the upside game that we want to take down a DFS contest. So. Yeah, hasn't really had the right exact game script and hasn't really got the big game yet, but I think that you're going to see some out of them. And I like the matchup against the Jets who have, uh, you know, they're not, they're not, this is not the greatest defense in the world. Um, one other name just to throw out that I'm just, I'm keeping an eye on is James Robinson. Um, I'm open to it. I'm, I'm hesitant to pull the trigger and he's a guy I usually like to play and I don't know why entirely. So that's one I might revisit. He's been doing well too, Matt Bobby. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a, I have an elite rainmakers card of him, so he's in my elite rainmakers. He, he was week. supposed to not not be this healthy oh. to start the year. He's, yeah. you know what I mean. He was yeah. not supposed to be the one getting all this these this work nine months after I mean Achilles surgery. Um, so I'm I'm just surprised that it's gone that route. But hey, it's working for them, so I don't see any reason why they would stop it. Yeah, they're doing a lot of double running backs. I mean, like Atini's yeah. getting a lot of work still too. Hey, Joe Mixon, my man, rushed for a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 not another one. Just the first one. Just, oh, yeah. I'm just catching yeah. up my bad. Okay. Yeah. 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 My oh, bad. nice. Um. All right. Well, let's let's move over to uh to wide receiver because all right, we're gonna have to like. I mean, I my priorities again. They're gonna be in my the guys I have in my in my game stacks. All that stuff. Um. I, I think that Stefan Diggs is 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 a great play. I, I just, I'm very surprised that the Baltimore secondary has been as incompetent as they have been so far this year. Um, I am going to mix in both. They're, they're not priorities for me, but I will play a little bit of Duvernay as a value option in my stacks there to still help save and get that ex- exposure to the sacks. He scored a touchdown in every game so far, including the, the one was on a kickoff, but um or a punt, I mean, uh, but I, I do, I do really want to heavily focus on Baltimore, but it, it just, just randomly the guys who I like outside of games that I've got as priorities, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Lockett, Amari Cooper, Curtis Samuel, Rondale Moore is one of my favorites on the slate. I love Dobbs, um, Richie James, or one of the Giants receivers. I'm just not decided on which one yet. Drake London and Cortland Sutton. Those are my, and they're all the mid tier guys that allow me to play my big, my big guys, which is going to be the, you know, the Andrews and, and Diggs lineup. You know what I mean? So I, I need the, the guys who are a little bit cheaper and Rondale Moore, Richie James and, and Dobbs give me that, that chance. So that's what I, that's what I'm looking at this week. What, what, what are some of the ones that stand out for you? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like those guys. I mean, like, I mean, I was, I even talked about DK Metcalf last week on the show guys. Now he's even got a better matchup against Detroit. And I mean, he did score a touchdown. I mean, Gino's popping a little bit. I mean, he's only six, eight on DK. Um, eight percent ownership coming in right now. I mean, he might be a guy that's loaned. Um, I'm on St. Brown. I've been really high on him this year. Um, he's coming in about 13 percent. I mean, people like that Detroit stack, I think, a little bit might get some ownership. Um, a little bit, obviously. Diggs, Diggs coming in at, uh, right now, at like 21 percent. That's kind of high, but I don't you know, buy that. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I, I don't like ownership to, uh, when we're doing the show, guys, really. But I mean, I kind of Mention it a little bit, so then maybe if you guys are watching it, and then you see Abraham something Sims has him at nine percent, and Sheets has him at five percent. Um, Diggs, yeah, he's going to be more than that, but it's not okay. going to be as much more. As yeah, it. so I got some numbers off on on some of the the projections yeah. I got here in front of me. Um, yeah, you know that Denver, you know Sutton has looked good with uh, um, Russell Wilson in camp this year. I'm just waiting for the big game. I mean, he does force feed him a little bit, yep. um, so that's been pretty good. Um, you know, I'm a big chargers guy. So throwing in like a low on Keenan Allen, if he's in, he gets a lot of receptions. I think Herbert's really missed Keenan Allen guys. And, and you can tell like he needs another go-to receiver. I think he's been doing a lot of check downs to Palmer. And, and, and I think Keenan Allen's always been his, his favorite target. So like, if he comes in and he's ready to go, giving it a good thing, I think against Houston, I mean, he could be a guy that get, catches eight passes coming back and maybe sneaks in on a touchdown on a long run or something. Yep. I, think, I think you can get that. So, and then obviously we're going to go with a lot of the guys in our stacks. You know, I did talk about Christian Kirk and that Jacksonville, maybe run back on Philly. I really like that. Or I know Bobby talked about James Robinson run I back like that on Kirk. that. Yeah. Um, I've been playing a lot of, you know, Kirk this year and a lot of James Robinson. So I, I have been on the Jags a little bit early. And I think we want to get on them before everyone else is, mm-hmm. you know, Mike Williams again in that chargers game. You know, I really like him. I don't know if I can play Devontae Smith after such a big game, but I've always liked his talent. Um, mm-hmm. 
But I mean, you know, he's in that game when he's good. You know, I. Mm-hmm. I like I like Devontae Smith. I like I like AJ Brown also in that game. I mean, I like everybody. Yeah, I think I think you can really stack that game up, guys. That Jacksonville Philly game. Um, I'm probably gonna have that in some of my main stacks, both sides of it. Um, usually I play some bigger lineups, a lot of the three entry max stuff. So I try to pick a couple games out and do a d- couple lineups and like I'll like you know I'll play a wildcat and a power sweep and like have it like that game stacked in a couple different builds. So and then kind of get different with my positional players or my running backs. So, yeah, I don't know if I haven't really did any research on some cheap guys that are popping right now. I know everyone's been playing with this Richie James guy, or, or he, he looks like a big week, right? Um, you said Rondell Moore, which, you know, I've always been high on him. If he if he gets back in the game, I think Kyler Murray needs someone to get the ball to. I mean, he's just looked not as good as we've seen in the past. Yep. Um, I think so, it would be a lot better with Moore there. Yeah. And- I think it is going to be hard with the, to to figure out the value right now because we have some question marks. Like, yeah, a lot of question. You know, marks. If, if Renfro if too. If Amon Amin- Ra is, is 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 in fact out, then DJ Shark and Josh yeah. Reynolds both become interesting value plays. Um, I particularly like Reynolds because of his connection with Goff going back to the Rams, even when he was their fourth. Yeah, and he was he was th- he threw it to Reynolds last week a lot. Yeah, um, Reynolds and he he'll he, he will look for him. He's very yeah. comfortable with him, and he gets work. I mean, he had ten targets last week. Like, yeah. sign me up for whatever whatever the result is. I'll take ten targets yeah. for a guy at forty six hundred. <laughs> like, so, so that's another thing is I'm giving you a lot of the guys I like this week, guys. But like, p- point per dollar plays right now are hard because we're still getting a lot of question marks. Like, we don't know if Swift's going to give it a go. We don't know if I'm on is going to give it a go. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of questions. Hunter Renfro. Maybe we go back to freaking Matt Conk. Collins has been just tearing it up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, That's a is huge he thing. out now? He might be out now, right? Uh, Hollins? Yeah, no, he's still good. No, he's, he's good. Yeah, he's so good. if Renfro's out again, I mean, they don't even play the same spot, but Hollins has been getting a lot of work for that Vegas team, you know? So, absolutely. So, like, you know, there's a lot of question marks still today when we're doing this show, um, you know? So, yeah, I don't mind, like, um, we talk a lot of correlation plays, like, you know, you play Derrick Henry for Tennessee, maybe run it back with Pittman. Maybe Derrick Henry gets the lead for them and the Colts got to throw the ball mm-hmm. you know, type of game strategy, guys, that we go on, you know, like. Um, yeah, it know, is really just, important. And it, it's a try kind of stacking and stuff that, you know, Bobby was talking about. You really like, you know, what we'll bring backs with a Philly game? What we'll bring back, you know, Mark Andrews, Lamar, then like, oh, I'm going to play Diggs, you know. So, yeah, like, this is a year so far we've seen two of the millionaire makers, one with skinny quarterback stacks with no run back, you know, like. And this might, I've been doing more of that this year too. So for what it's yeah. worth, I, I don't know why, but you know, because it may, it actually uh, makes some sense. We're, we're relying too much. It, it would make more sense if we were doing it like on six to seven game slates, where it makes sense that all the energy would be focused on one game, which like it was with the Dolphins and in, in, in Baltimore a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Baltimore, you didn't need the run back last week, even though there was some good ones in that Baltimore thing. But there was no run back on the millionaire winning lineups with Lamar. Um, anyway, I just thought it was interesting to, to note that. Um, but in general, with all the other things, I think you want to have the rest of your lineup at least be somewhat correlated. Um, even if you're not, you're not doing it with your, your quarterbacks, you, you want to find a running back from one side a receiver from another side, a tight end from one side, a receiver a running back from the other side. I think that's just, just, it's always a good rule of thumb to follow. Um, at tight I end, gave, I gave that Wilcox play in the discord guys. If you, if you got on and he just caught an 18 oh, yard pass. Play, huh? Nice. He just caught an 18 yard pass. Yeah, nice. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, you're good, buddy. You're good. Um, tight end, I have three that stand out, and I'm going to be me- mixing in a slew of other guys, and two of them are questionable. I love Dawson Knox in a game where no one's going to be playing him. That could be a shootout. I love uh, Hawkinson, and I love Mark Andrews, obviously, as my number one. Uh, there are a ton of other good plays that you can you can pick out. I think there's some upside for Njoku. I think Kyle Pitts is going to, is on the verge of having a big game. Darren Waller's had some monster games against the, the, I mean, it's even against this very good uh, Denver defense in the past. There's a lot of guys who I think you could spread out with, but I'm focused. My main three are Knox, Andrews, and Hawkinson. I tell you what, Bobby. Excuse me, Goddard. Yeah, Goddard's a great play. You guys don't have to spend up this week at tight end. I mean, I don't even, the highest guys in Mark Andrews is 7-1. And then everyone's like, you know, Waller pits are five, five, six, and five K. And then everyone's like three, five to, you know, four K ish that are relatively like Hawkinson. You know, I, I don't mind Gerald Everett. He, I mean, he's been getting some looks with Herbert. Maybe he gets two touchdowns this week or something different. Um, you got Najoku at three, seven. You got uh, Ertz is a little bit higher at four, seven. I mean, he's going to get a lot of looks. He got missed one in the red zone. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that's not a bad play. I really do like the Hawkinson play. Goddard play is awesome. I mean, I think Philly's been just feeding him the ball. I mean, that, that, he's been one of my favorite plays. Lot, and he's done it know. without even like he hasn't got the big end zone play yet because they've had so many weapons. That's the only thing that worries me about ever playing him is that they're using all their weapons. You know what I mean? So it's not like it was the, before where it was. I remember Ertz or him would go off every week when they were both there. Yeah. But I do like I do really like him still. I, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Just wanted to throw that. Out. No, you're good. I mean, he's had six, you know you know four to six targets a game. You know three to five catches on every game. And remember, they've been winning by a lot, so they weren't running throwing the ball as much in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So yeah, he hasn't had the monster to like the Mark Andrews type game yet with a double touchdown or anything. But I mean, it, it's there. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's viable. But you're right; they're spending around AJ Brown one week. It was Devontae Smith last week? So you know that game, and then Hertz runs it a lot too. So it takes away a little bit of upside for the pass catchers versus a pocket passer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I really do like Dawson Knox. I was high on him coming into the year, and he's only three eight at five percent ownership right now. In a good game, we like – and tight end's been taking a lot of touchdowns away. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Logan Thomas got one last week. Well, I mean, Washington's mm-hmm. looked pretty bad. You know, some of these cheaper tight ends guys are, you know, getting out there. I mean, heck, this Wilcox guy for the Bengals just caught one, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's not a touchdown, but – it, it feels like it's been a year where there's been a lot of, like, backup tight end touchdowns so far. And offensive linemen checking in is eligible for touchdowns and things like that. Yeah, and, and the backup running backs, too, this year have been yeah. all, all just taking so much work from these. Like, Piran had one over Mixon the other day. Mixon has, like, six points, and piran has got, like, 11. It's like, yeah. really? And that's like, you know, like, you know, um, Howard – Howard for Houston scored two touchdowns one week and he's like second or third string tight end or whatever he is, you know, and then Will Disley's been getting a ton of work with, you know, Seattle versus, you know, DK in the end zone, you know, mm-hmm. like, it's just like, Oh, you know, even Will Disley caught like a 75 yard or some crazy. Do you know who has the second most, most, most targets on this slate at tight end of any player? Tyler Conklin. Oh, Tyler Conklin. is going to play um, against a team that likes to blitz a lot there's a chance that they might have to dump it out to him a few times out there, or you could argue that they would need him back there to help block. But uh, he's, he's been getting plenty of targets, seven, nine and eight targets his first three games. He's another one. I didn't mention that I that all of these cheap Dawson Knox and Joku Conklin uh, Everett Hawkinson Goddard. Those are all really solid to me, but I think I'm going to still where, where I'm not playing Andrews. It's basically going to be one of those guys in all my lineups, because I, I really think they're all similar upside and similar plays. And, and maybe if Hawkinson gets too too popular, then I can switch over to uh, I'll switch over to one of these other guys like Everett, um, who I think has a really good chance to to be a part of that Houston Charger game. And they're and like you said, they're all cheap this week. Um, yeah, yeah, they're all like you just scroll through a lot of those guys in that price range. It's crazy. And then for what you're you're saying, Conklin's had three double digit games in fantasy point wise this week or this year already. Mm-hmm. In, th- in three ga- weeks so like you know 10 11 and 16 nothing crazy but i mean we're talking 3k prices yeah i mean you know, if, if he catches a touchdown in that last game he has a monster week you know what i mean one more yeah, catch right touchdown oh yeah yeah monster yards, week with a touchdown right there. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? so yeah these just random tight ends guys this is like you can really pick any of these guys and and, and really one of the underwhelming tight ends that i i think is one of my favorite potential is uh noah fant um yeah. I uh, really, I really liked him when he, when he, you know. Yeah. I don't he, know what's going on with them. They keep using the. They, like, they keep using the, the backups, like you're saying, like Sorbert yeah. and all that. Or yeah, yeah, not Sorbert. Um, is it uh, the, the, uh, Disley? D- Disley, yeah, Disley's and been Parkinson. taking all his reps. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Sorbert's the Al- Albert O guys, which yeah, we don't really know one. what's going on with Albert O, but he has been popular lately too. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, the tight end situation is weird. You just had Evan Ingram up there too, you know. Like yeah. I've always been high on his talent. He just never really did anything for the Giants and mm-hmm. was injured. And you know, he's been getting a lot of looks. So what's he been averaging for targets? He only had three last week, but they were yeah. up. They won the game thirty-eight to ten, so they won it kind of going away, but without him. But they did try. He did, he had the one touchdown called back. Um, had another one that he dropped in the end zone. And the week before, he had eight targets, seven catches against Indy. And they, they definitely seem like they're trying, they try to feed him the ball. So maybe, maybe in this particular game script, it works, but I, I don't, I mean, I, I, you know, me, I'm not always a guy who wants to recommend everything. So I want to go back to my, those are all guys who I'm mixing in, but yeah. Andrews Hawkinson and Knox are my three favorites for all, for different reasons. I love that Dawson Knox is in my game environment that, that I love. And I can play him with Hawk, with uh, Andrews as a way of saving. Why can't, you know, at 3,800, 
He gets in the end zone once, has six catches. He's as good as these receivers that we're desperate for. And we know he'll be on the field assuming that he's healthy uh, yep. for Buffalo. And he's, he is, he is going to be more of what they, part of what they do, in my opinion, going forward. Yeah, I mean, it could be a good double tight end week, like Bobby just said, especially with some of these cheaper tight ends, especially like Knox and pairing him with Andrews. You know, Andrews could have a ceiling game, and, you know, Knox could be right there behind it. And at his price, he's definitely going to pay off, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. And I was just mentioning like Ingram, maybe like a, as wise as like a stack, like Kirk Ingram, Trevor Lawrence type stack. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, like with running it back with like Goddard or like Goddard or AJ Brown double tight end again right in that game. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a, the tight ends. That mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's move on because there are some defenses that there's not, we don't have the obvious cheap defense, which hasn't really worked out necessarily either. Um, that's going to be the ultimate value play. The one that's going to get the ownership probably is the Giants, and that's they're not cheap. They're 3,100. I mean, everybody you're going to see more in the, the other range. The one cheap defense that maybe you just throw it out there because they've been really good and historically hurts has turned the ball over, the Jaguars at 2,300. Um, because you're going to need every, every 100 this week is going to matter. Every dollar is going to matter. Um, I, I think the Bears, the Giants are, are two very logical ones. I think that the Lions are reasonable, which is weird to say because they're the Lions. Um, although I actually like this Lions team a little bit. I think the Jets um, at 2,600. But then you've got the the the, the paying up for guys. And, and there are a couple of all like the Steelers at 36 against the Jets, I think is really interesting with their blitzing. And I think that the Packers against New England uh, with, Ho with Hoyer, I think that that's, that's the one if you can – if you were going to try and go out of your way to get one, I think that it, it would be the Packers for me. So that's, that's where I'm at with defense. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, those defenses either. Um, one that you didn't mention, I mean, the cheap one of the Patriots at 2.3 K. I mean, the oh, Packers you want, you want to pick on your own Packers. Uh, you know, I was, I was going to say I, I'm a Packers fan, but I mean, they haven't looked that great at times. I mean, look at week one, they've got it together recently a little bit. But, I mean, they haven't looked all that fantastic. I mean, um, Dobbs had a big game, and they're starting to feed yeah, Lazard's back. But, I mean, like, you know, Rodgers doesn't have a Devontae Adams to check it down to as much as he did before or target-wise. You know, the running backs, I think, are both really good. But, I mean, the Patriots could scheme a little bit to, you know, Rodgers a little bit. And, you know, they've done that in the past, and they take away, you know, some of the good, you know, good plays that they take away the running backs. Rogers is going to have to force the ball somewhere and maybe yeah. they get a pick six. Yeah. So, but the only thing about that is I want to say, point this out. It's one of my favorite stats going into, I think it was midway through last season, Aaron Rodgers and his whole career had never thrown a pick six, which is unbelievable to me because Brett Favre was through like 40 or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I know. Um, and he had, I know, he had never but, thrown one and then he threw him and he threw him twice last year in back-to-back -back games after never having thrown him before. Yeah. And so I, in general, I don't like to ever take defenses against him because uh, just just how how rarely he makes that big mistake and that's sort of what you want to have the hope for but i i totally hear you at 2300 uh they it's not yeah. like, like an offensive offensive juggernaut or anything i think i think this week's a good spread it out defense like you talked to try to get up to the packers but you know if you need to grab a couple of these lower own ones that you mentioned they're, they're viable um you you know the jets have done really well in the past against crap teams and you know Turbinsky does turn it like doesn't throw the ball very well so um they could be a the team low on defense at two six so I definitely like them and and I am a fan of the Lions you know I mean I do like Seattle stacks a little bit but I mean that Lions that that could be another game where it's end up being a low scoring game mm -hmm. um you know some of these defenses you know, you know, could get you there on a, you know, everyone thinks it's going to be a big points game. And then the defense is what scores a touchdown and it's a good, good scoring game, you know? Yep. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and if you're going to, you know, I'm going to have one stack of, of Baltimore and Buffalo where I use the defense against Buffalo. Um, even though if I play a couple of Buffalo guys, cause I'm, I'm going to play, I'm going to use it with Duvernay, Duvernay, just in case he runs with one back again, you know, you get sort of the double, the double edge thing. It used to be so fun back in the days when there would be guys who could actually return kickoffs and stuff. And you could have like guys would have run back like five in a year. So 30% of the games they're running it back. So playing that defense always was fun to play with that, with that guy at minimum cost, you know, um, which was uh, the one I'm trying to think of the most that, that was the biggest case of it was with the uh, Philly. Um, the back of the, the, the other running back they had the pass catching back. Why can't I think I would, yeah, whatever. Somebody in chat will tell me his name because I'm not thinking of it right now, but he was a, uh, it was, I, I, my girlfriend almost won the million one time where he, uh, he ran two back, but he, 
she had them and she had this, the Eagles defense and she ended up like just missing winning the millionaire maker. <laughs> like it was really wild. Wow. Um, it just, so I'm just using it as a correlation thing. I think it's kind of interesting, but probably far fetched, but still, uh, it was fun back in the day. Anyway, overall takes some of the overall things, maybe a strong take. You have a guy you think will be in the millionaire winner. Um, maybe remind us of another stack that you want to go with that maybe off the board, just something, something to sort of leave the people with before we get out of here. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Um, you put me on the spot on that well, one. I always am good at the end. You know, this is what I do at the end of the shows. I, no, I, I know. I know. I've been, I, I think last time I had a chargers take where the charger was going to be in there. Uh, I mean, Eckler's price coming down. I think he's going to have a big game one of these days. Yeah. Um, I, I could really see him, him, him or Nick Chubb. I've been two of my favorite running backs. I, I think I've, I've always liked both of them coming in the last couple of years in the league. Um, both of them show good upside. They have spike weeks. And I think, I think one of them could end up in the, in the Millie maker lineup. So I like it. And I'm just going to remind everybody that I'm going to be playing the hell out of Buffalo, Baltimore. And I also think that Jacksonville is the sneaky team that could win somebody all the money. Um, I didn't mention him earlier in the show, but I wanted to just mention the receiver. Uh, the other uh, that I, I will be throwing some Jay Jones, if he's good to go. And if he's not good to go, maybe, maybe Marvin Jones finally gets a little bit of work. Um, but I do like, I do like all, all, I'm going to stack all parts of the games that I'm in on this week. Cause I, I think there is, you know, 60 plus 60 fit total point upside in Buffalo and Baltimore and Jacksonville and, uh, and, uh, Philly. Do you all like right. The well, it's great to be, have you back. Yeah, you know, go ahead. What were you going to say? I said, you like that Jacksonville double stack then? Like, yeah, I kind of do a little bit. Two receivers or something. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, it, well, if, if, if Zay goes down, that means you really have only two legit regular receivers. So. I think, it's, I think it's, an, it's an interesting spot to take. But if, if, he, if he doesn't, if they, if they don't play, I'm happy to, to go after him. They've lived, looked for him quite a bit, and he can just catch one ball and get you there almost. So Yeah, for sure. Anyway, all right. Well, Rody, it's great to have you back, man. Let's have a big week. Look forward to seeing you Sunday at 11. You're going to be able to be, make it with us? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everybody, and uh, we will hopefully see some screenshots all weekend long. Uh, take it down, guys. Rody, I'll let you uh, take us out. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's uh, get it. <laughs> all right. Good luck, everybody.